Hey everybody, Joe Borey from Single Play Retro Gaming. So I often get the question, Hey Joe, how in the world do you get your game collection to be so densely packed and yet still look so organized? And today I just wanted to share with you a few tricks that I've learned over the years on how to pull that off. So let's get started. So the first thing to note here is the type of shelves that I'm using. So these are IKEA Finby shelves. The white version of these are called, I believe, Gersby shelves. But um, these are actually IKEA's more inexpensive shelf of this style. A lot of people like to use the Billy bookcase, which are a great set of shelves. But the Billy bookcases are at least twice the price of these guys. And that's before you then buy additional shelves to slot into them. Um, the other issue that I personally had with Billy is that they are so tall. They go up to about here, and I don't really like having my games up that high. Once they're kind of out of my eye level, it's really hard to find what I want. So instead of having them all be up there, I prefer to have my collectibles up here and the games eye level them below. So for me, the Finby shelves just worked a whole lot better. Now that said, um, the Finby shelves are less expensive but they also only come with a set number of shelves. So the next thing that I needed to do is make sure one, that I got them all spaced just right, and two, that I could insert additional shelves in the process. So um, if we look here, I've got two shelves already laid out to show kind of, okay, this is the spacing that I'm looking for. And that's an important first step to setting this up is I've got a shelf and another shelf and I know the space between them. Now, the reason why that's so important is if I carefully pull these off, just a moment as I snag these guys from the shelf, if I'm careful enough, don't even have to worry about taking the games down, which is certainly convenient for reorganizing. So now I've got pins set exactly where I want the shelves, uh, the spacing that I want the shelves to go. And that can be used now as a template all the way down. Now I could sit here with a tape measure and measure it all down and mark and drill and it could get really complicated. Or I could use a simple piece of foam core board, pop this thing, make sure it is lined up at the outside edge of the shelf and just push here and push here. And what that's done is the pin itself has punctured two little holes in this piece of foam core. Now there's also two holes in the back we need to worry about, and those two are actually from a different distance from the back of the shelf as these are from the front. So I want to go ahead and take this on the back, line it up at the back, push, and that one's having trouble pushing. There we go and do the same thing. And there we go. Now I've got front and back holes um, perfectly aligned for where I want to put the shelves. So then I can grab a drill with a 11 64th drill bit. This is exactly the right size to drill a hole that a peg can go into to hang a shelf. I just want to finish filling out these holes with my drill bit. And there we go. Now we got four holes. Um, and then I'm going to take this guy and I am going to use that to measure down the next shelf. So I can take that hole and I can hang it on this peg. And then I can use this other hole and drill it out. I'm not actually going to drill through because this shelf is already set up correctly. But I use that hole and I drill it out and I do that for each of the four holes around uh, the shelf. And now that gives me spaces that I can plug four pegs. Um, when you drill your own hole, sometimes you might need a little bit of a rubber mallet to knock the pegs in. But I can put in those four pegs. And now... I can hang a shelf full of games right there on that new one. 
Set those up, align them a little bit. Then I can take the previous shelves that I had. In fact, this one was a top shelf, so let's go ahead and put it up here. Align those. And finally, grab the third shelf. Right in here. It's hung up a little bit. Oh, is that hung on? There we go. Line them up, and there we are. Now we have an additional shelf, perfectly spaced from the other two, using nothing but a simple foam core board with some holes punched in it. So you can imagine, you know, my game room has about 12 of these Finby shelves in it. And so, um, like, to go through and measure and mark and drill, and it just take forever. But by using this trick, I'm able to put together and custom drill a shelf in, you know, a fraction of the time that it would have taken to do all of the measurements by hand. Now, on top of that, if you think about it, um, yeah, these are nicely spaced, but the Finby shelf only comes with four shelves. What about this one here? <laughs> you know, it's, it's or what, what about keep on going down? Well, there's a couple of things that I do here. Now, first of all, when you're putting together a Finby shelf, there is generally a stabilizing shelf that goes right down here. Uh, there's some pre-drilled holes. You're supposed to put the stabilizing shelf in. And by doing that, um, you know, it is a set shelf. It cannot move. It cannot be removed. Now, that's great for stable shelves, but bad for custom, for custom organization. So what I've actually done is when I put these shelves together, I left the stabilizing shelf out. So there's only the bottom and the top. Now, like, that sounds like it might be, well, the shelves might be wobbly. Well, they're not, right? They're nice and stable. Because I've done a wall of shelves, they all stabilize each other. There's no need for additional internal stabilization. But what that's actually done is it's given me one additional floating shelf that I can put anywhere in this shelving unit. And so the shelf that was originally used for a stabilizer is instead just another shelf on here. And then um, on top of that, you know, you still, there's a couple more shelves needed. What I've done is I've bought one additional Finby unit for every, I don't know, I think it's every three or four shelves that I've put up and just poached the shelves out of them. Now, um, that sounds funny to buy an additional piece of furniture so you can just steal its shelves, but the Finby wood is almost all shelves. There's only three pieces that aren't shelves and, um, all of those, you know, buying the whole unit is actually still cheaper than doing custom uh, or additional shelves slipped into a Billy bookcase. So, yeah, by buying a couple of additional Finbies and using the stabilizing shelf as a floating shelf instead, I've able, been able to take these and pack them from top to bottom, seven layers of um, cartridges or in the case of my DVD shelves over there, there's actually eight layers of DVDs using the same trick per shelving unit. You can fit a lot of games on that. So um, that's how I set up the shelves. There's one additional thing um, I wanted to show you guys and it's actually up there. So let's tilt this camera up. And you see that up above all of my games is where I show off my boxes. And, um, so we've got these shelves, they've got the games on top, and they've got these LED lights hidden underneath. Now, these shelves are just a basic IKEA Mosslanda picture ledge. I mean, these guys are meant to sit like this, drill to the wall, you set pictures in here, it's got a little lip to keep things from sliding off the front. They work really great. They're, they're, um, I actually use these for handhelds over there on the other side of the game room. They work awesome. But flip it over and install it upside down. And now what you have is a flat top, which I have up there. But more importantly, I have a lip that I can hide an LED light strip back behind it. So all you see is the light. Now you'll notice over there, there are actually, um, the lights are reflecting off of the game cases. That's, a, that's something I'm actually still trying to get the look right on. I think I just need to pull them forward and have them propped. And I'm working on some ways to do that right now. But, um, that's the reflection. The light strip itself is nicely hidden 
behind the MOS Lambda picture ledge lip. And all you have to do is install it upside down. Now, um, if you're putting anything heavy on it, you want to put an additional uh, screw hole and screw kind of up here um, so that you get a little bit more, you know, lock to the wall. But for just the weight of game boxes and stuff, I just use these two screws in wall anchors and it works great. And so let's bring this guy back down. All right. And so that's just a couple of tricks that I have uh, figured out over the years on how to make this game cave just look and feel dense and packed with games, but do so on a budget and pretty easy to set up. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. It takes a long time to set up this game room, but I can imagine how much longer it would have taken had I gone in and measured and drilled and, and, and like did all of the work by hand and just a simple piece of foam core saved me a ton of work. Um, trying to hide LED light strips can be really difficult or they can be easy if you're just a little bit creative with the picture ledges. So um, I hope you guys like this video. I'd love to know down in the comments if you have interest in any other videos on tricks that I've used throughout my game room to give it kind of the unique look that it has. Um, so I um, plan to do more videos like this, more videos on uh, game recommendations, retro gaming reviews. Um, but I'd love to know, what are you guys looking for? What would you like to see more of? And if you wanna see more videos like what I do here, absolutely help me out, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell next to it, and you'll get notifications anytime I put something new out there. So I thank you for your time and you have a great day.